Media, please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll start with Sean Shapiro, The Athletic. Um, I'm curious, we, we've talked a lot about your coaching career and your history, and I'm curious how your playing career prepped you for this. Because I look at a guy like Joel Hanley, and he probably had a similar career to you, up and down to the NHL and the AHL. And I'm curious how that perspective as a player helped prepare you back in 84, 85, whenever it was when you made the jump from coaching to, from playing to coaching. Actually, it was November of 1983. And I was 28 years old, and I was a player assistant coach captain in the American Hockey League. And uh, Winnipeg fired Tom Watt, and they brought in Barry Long and myself. And that was so that would be November 22nd, 83, something like that. But I, I think what prepared me um, more than anything was I, I wanted to stay in the game. Uh, and I knew at 25 that. I was going to be bouncing up and down, and if I wanted to stay in the game in some capacity down the road, that it would be coaching. I, I certainly had my eyes on that. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't a great skater, um, but I, I could play my position. I was responsible defensively. That's why I hung on for whatever heck it was, seven, eight years. So I just really tried to study the game defensively. I, I didn't have the speed or the puck skills to be an offensive player. I had great admiration for anyone that could do those things. but um, So I think it's, it was more my passion to stay in the game. It was studying how do I could survive in the game, uh, learning from other players, learning from other coaches. Um, so, you know, my last, the last contract I negotiated as a player, and I was doing my own at that point in the 80s, um, I negotiated a, a two-clause two contract, one as a player, and with John Ferguson Sr. at the time, we also put a clause in there that if I retired as a player, here's my salary as a coach. And we didn't de determine which level I would start at. Well, that wasn't the point that uh, the, the day they wanted me to retire, um, then I would. And we'd go, get into coaching somewhere in the organization. So basically, it started then. I think I was 27 when I negotiated that contract. But even at that age, I, I knew I wasn't going to play much longer. In the National Hockey League, I knew I could play five, six more years in the minors. Um, but if I was going to get into coaching, I was going to take the first opportunity and jump at it. Matt DeFranks, Dallas Morning News. Hey, Rick. Uh, this is something we've seen all year, but why is your defense so able to keep shots to the outside? Why are you able to keep shots to the outside all year? Well, it's... Um, it's just a matter of getting everyone back into your zone as quickly as possible and, and working from the inside out and not, and not chasing the trying. There were times last night we were, but trying not to chase the game. If you come in and you stop and you work from the inside out, eventually the game will come to you when you come into your zone. And we put a lot of, you know, people say, oh, it starts in the defensive zone. No, it doesn't. It starts in the neutral zone when you're coming into the defensive zone and making the right reads. Uh, but we put a lot of focus on working from the inside out, coming in, and if uncertainty, just kind of stopping in the, what we call the house. And uh, just again, we're just working from the inside out. Uh, I thought there was a few. And listen, Tampa is a great team. A lot of elite players, man. They're, they're going to make you chase the game sometimes. But for the most part, that's that's really what we try to focus on. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Hi, Rick. Um, you guys very successfully. Your game's really frustrating, right? Because you give up lots of shots sometimes, certainly against Vegas, certainly in the third period last night. And I get it. They're not scoring chances, but they're shots. And the other team sometimes feels like, you know, geez, we're doing everything right. and It's just not going in. We just need a lucky break. When you hear those things from other players or other coaches or anything that we're playing great and we just have to, you know, it's going to come, it's going to come. Does that mean you got them right where you want them? No, not, not really. No. Um, again, that's that's their team. We, we keep the focus on our team. We don't like giving up those shots that we, we gave up. I, I know some, most of them are from the outside. We still don't like uh, spending that much time in our zone. And when, whether, yeah, it's nice to say we can give up the outside shot and everything. Mark, we, we, that's not the game plan, trust me. Uh, when, when we're seeing that, we're, we're, we're on our heels, and that's not how we play the game. We play the game on our toes going north. So I don't, you know, I, 
their coaches, they all have their own approach and they're doing their things they want to do. But when I see that, I'm, I'm more concerned about our club and we just got to get back to playing uh, a more aggressive game up ice. Uh, I don't like our, our playing in our zone at all, ever. And uh, when we're giving up the shots that we did last night, uh, some of them are, are self-inflicted in terms of not making uh, the right decision with the puck and coming right back at us. Clearly the penalties were a factor last night and we lose momentum. So those are what I mean when I say they're self-inflicted, but um, we, you know, we, we can be frustrating, more frustrating to play against when we're up ice and we're spending time in the own zone and we're finishing checks and uh, making them spend time in their zone. That's the frustration that we want to we want to put on teams. Dean Bennett, Canadian Press. Uh, Rick, you mentioned last night about uh, how activating the D has been a focus since training camp in July. Can you just analyze how it's gone so far? Is there is there still room for improvement? It seems like it's going really well. And and uh, what's it meant to the playoff run? What was the second part? And what's it meant to the playoff run? Um, well, it, listen, we had to we had to change the way we were playing with the puck. We did. Uh, that's what we we've been talking a lot about uh, since we went to camp in July 11th. That was the focus. And it continues to be the focus. And as I've said a number of times in this league, you better have your fourth guy joining the rush, or you're not going to create enough time, uh, chances off the rush, and you're not going to spend any time and uh, enough time in the offensive zone. So um, that's been a big focus for us, uh, it, and it'll continue to be. I mean, you watch them play. You got Sergachev coming, McDonough's, or <laughs> Victor. You got them all coming. That's the game today, and uh, so we 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 had to improve our. Our play with the puck and um, some nights it's there it works and some nights it doesn't um, but there's they're, they're coming and you know we're after our D all the time to keep coming and when that happens you're putting a lot of onus on the puck here to make the right decisions with the puck uh, you bring your D up and the forward turns the puck over then you're usually on a scramble coming back but uh, we're here where we are because uh, the play of our defense, and uh, they're, all, they're 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 chipping in offensively when they have to. And, and again, when you see uh, Andre Sakara <laughs> standing behind the net, <laughs> making the Gretzky plays from there, uh, you, you, when you see that, you, the other side, the flip side of that, is that there better be a forward backing him up. And I think, and that all is tied into trusting each other on the ice. So our D are coming, yeah. You have to trust the, the players with the puck to make the right decisions with it. And then you have to trust the forwards to back up the defense when they are when when they are up in the rush. And if you go back to the last game with Vegas, we gave up those two goals because that didn't happen. And our D were there and the forwards weren't. Uh, so, you know, there's there's it's not perfect, but it's the way we're playing and we're going to keep going. Steve Wino, Associated Press. Hey, Rick, I, I hate to ask one of these, you've been around hockey a long time questions, but there used to be this thing that like you have to mug somebody in, in, in playoff overtime or late in the game to get a penalty. Have you been surprised how many penalties there have been in overtime, late in games in these playoffs, maybe because of the puck over the glass rule? Well, I, I know why that rule was put in, and I agree with it. There was a time in our league where now we ice it. There was a time in our league where players were just taking automatic, you just flip it out because you're retired. Right, so uh, I understand why that rule was put in, and it's a good rule. Um, it's unfortunate that it's being called as much as it, it is, but you know sometimes the puck is rolling. It's certainly not intentional by any player. And when the puck is rolling, and you're just trying to, you got to get it off the glass because the other D is standing right in the blue line waiting for it. So your objective is to get it off the glass when the puck rolls and flipping like it is on the ice. And the chances are, you know, sometimes it's going to go over the glass. But again, I remember the time, and th this is why we put the rule in. <laughs> so teams weren't tired, they just flipped the puck into the crowd. Uh, so I get it. And um, again, it's, it happens. You gotta, you gotta live with it. Mike Heike, DallasStars.com. Hey Rick, uh, what have you seen from Jason Dickinson taking over for Foxa? Uh, and can you just talk about his hockey sense? He seems to read plays very well. What was the second part? His hockey sense, it seems to be high. Um, listen, uh, Jason's done a great job filling in for Faxi. We had him on wing for a while, and he's a natural center. I thought it was tough for him 
to play wing. He's a great skater and he's got hockey sense and he's got good skills. Uh, and he, listen, he's a great team player and wanted, he said, okay, if I have to play wing, I'll play wing. Um, and the, the, he is a natural sentiment and he's much more effective at center and he's done a great job. He's been a huge part of the penalty kill for the two years that I've been here. And um, his versatility helps. He's, he's, he's better at center because of his skating and his hockey sense. He makes good reads defensively and he's got, he's got really good puck skills. I think maybe we had them buried playing wing. He wasn't getting the puck enough. I think at center he's able to get the puck a little bit more and skate in open ice a little bit more and, and use the skating ability his, and his puck skills and his hockey sense. J.F. Chamat, General de Montreal. Hi, Rick. Um, as a coach, I'd like to know, how, how proud are you when you're seeing a guy like Anton Hudobin? Uh, he's 34 years old. He was a number two goalie for most of his career in the NHL. And now he's backbone of your team and he's leading a team to the Stanley Cup final. How proud are you of Anton? Well, again, very proud of him. Um, and as I've said many times, he, we're not surprised because this is what we've seen for two years. He's such a competitive guy. He's, he's such a battler in the net, such a great teammate. So I'm very happy for him uh, to get the recognition that he's getting now, long overdue. Um, but this is what we've seen for two years. And uh, uh, he, he, listen, you don't go anywhere in this league without great goaltending. You, you just don't. Uh, you can talk about defensive structures and everything else all you want. You, you've got to have someone back there who gives you a chance to, to win every game be, when there are breakdowns, which there are going to be. It's an imperfect game, and you need a great goaltender to keep you in there when those things happen. And I'm very happy and proud of Dobie the way he's, uh, he's, he's battling in the net. But again, are we shocked and surprised? No. Are we all very happy for him? Absolutely. We'll do a few more for Coach Callie Kaplan, Dallas Morning News. Hey Rick, I was wondering what the latest injury updates were for the four guys who were unfit to play yesterday and Hintz, Foxa, Bishop and Johns. No update on Hintz, uh, Foxy, Stephen and Bish are all still unfit to play. Tom Galetti, NHL.com. Rick, what did you think of the job you did against their top line last night and is physicality an important part of, of playing against them? They're great players and they're going to get their chances. You have to minimize them as much as you can. So I think we did a pretty good job of that. Um, again, they're elite, man. They're speed, skill, and they're, that whole core group, uh, and I know it well, has been together so long, um, six, seven, eight years now, and they, including some of those guys have played in the minors together and won championships. So that core group is, is elite. And they, again, they've been together so long. Um, they, they, their ability to read off each other and know where each other is without looking uh, is, 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 is it's fun to watch. It's uh, tough to coach against. But so all you can do in, in, against elite players like that is try to minimize the damage. Um, again, try to keep them up the, uh, on the outside as much as you can uh, and pressure them as much as you can all over the ice so they don't have a lot of time. But the way they play, the way they stretch you out and use the open ice, it's almost impossible to stop them. Um, you, so you, again, it's more about minimizing the damage and, uh, and not letting them have total free wheel out there. And I thought for the most part last night, uh, we did a very good job. And without the last change, we put a lot of pressure. You know, we roll four lines and we put a lot of pressure on our players uh, on ice awareness, just know who's on the ice, respect who's on the ice and play accordingly. We'll do two more questions for coach. Jim Matheson, Post Media. I have a question for you, Talking, You've been around a long time, as we keep pointing out. Why is it when you pull your goalie, you get an extra skater, you ice the puck, and you can put your goalie back in? If you've got an extra skater, why should you be able to put your goalie back in? In the puck? <laughs> You're asking me that. I don't, that's a rule I don't make. Um, yeah, well, I think you're going to have to ask league officials on that one, Jim. Um, I, I understand it. Um, it's a very good question that I don't have an answer for. I didn't put the rule, the rule in, so <laughs> good question, though. Last question, Mike McIntyre, Winnipeg Free Press. Hi, Rick, and greetings from lots of folks back in Winnipeg. Um, you were talking about great players on Tampa. They've been without a great player these whole playoffs. John Cooper said earlier today, though, that uh, Steven Stamkos is inching closer to a potential return. 
how, how would that change your game planning or would it change your game planning at all if they were to get a Steven Stamkos back at any point here? Uh, we're expecting Steven to play at some point. Um, so, listen, he's a great player. It changed the whole look on the power play. Um, so that, that's a big factor. We can, you take three penalties like we did in one period last night, they're going to do some damage with Steven out there and his ability to one time the puck. And he's, uh, he's just a great player. So it just gives them another offensive weapon where they use him. Uh, we know, again, it's on ice awareness. Uh, but Stevens are great. He's a great player. He's a great person. Uh, and he's a, you know, a captain. Of the team. So we're expecting him to play uh, at some point. And we'll just have to see how he's utilized. But immediately, you're, you're, you're concerned that the impact he'll have on their power play. Coach, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you.